This is Coach to Coach with Laura Van LaRusso and Dr. Keith McNeice. Welcome, everybody. It is Tuesday afternoon. It's 4 o'clock p.m. And we're going to talk to you about speaking. So I know that's the thing that people talk about a lot because we do it by our very nature. But this is more in terms of professional speaking. So whether you are going on stage, whether you yeah. do presentations as part of your job, or simply have to talk on the phone a lot. How mm -hmm. you communicate to somebody else is critical to your own branding and the branding of your company. And Laura has this thing that she keeps telling me how to do it, <laughs> how to do it right. How do you do it right, Laura? You do it. Oh do boy, it. That's, a, that's a major, that's a major ask there, but I'll now, try to be as helpful as You always tell me to do it and it's the S word. <laughs> Do it scared. Do it scared. And so what does that mean exactly? Do it scared. That means that no matter what your challenge is, uh, particularly when it comes to public speaking, do it scared. Get up to that podium and have your, your notes prepare ahead of time. Uh, I'm not saying don't prepare, but I'm saying don't be afraid of being successful. If you imagine that you will be successful and you prepare ahead of time with a few tips that we'll share with you today, you will not be scared. You will go up there scared and you will end up triumphant. Well, let's let's take a trip back in time then because I would have <laughs> needed this help from you when I was back in college. And so way, way back in, I think it was my junior year, of mm -hmm. college and in North Carolina, everybody has to take a public speaking class, right? It's part of the curriculum. Yeah. And, you know, that was not my thing. And so this is my time for a story, just a short story. So I'm speaking, so happy. So speaking is not, was not my thing at the time uh, mm -hmm. at all. Uh, and so we're talking about somebody who, you know, grew up in a rather somewhat dysfunctional family, parents divorced, uh, all kind of stuff going on. And I took all of that and just kind of closed in. And so I just kind of kept to myself a lot. Um, I was a misfit, nerd, geek, whatever word you want to use uh, mm -hmm. throughout high school. And it didn't change much by the time I got to college, even though by the time I got to college, I had been a Marine. And so just being still not having the skills or the confidence or the mm -hmm. competence to be a public speaker. And so I did what any rational person would do when faced with this having to do with scared situation. Right. And that is a typical college semester is 16 weeks long, right? It goes from September mm -hmm. to December or January to whatever the, you know, the summertime mm -hmm. is. Well, there's summer classes that cut that 16 week agenda into six weeks. Right. Intensive. So, so, but I'm thinking six weeks of talks is a whole lot better than 16 <laughs> weeks of talks. I can get out of this. <laughs> and so I chose the six week. I took, you know, I took a mm -hmm. six week course, but it's in the summer. And the requirements for this course were um, professional dress. And so not necessarily a jacket, but at least shirt and tie and pants and all that kind of cool stuff. But you have to understand, uh, it's North Carolina and it's hot in the summertime. <laughs> and so it wasn't comfortable to or fro, and it definitely wasn't comfortable inside the classroom. To cut this uh, long story short, I had to give mm -hmm. four presentations, one, two, three, four. Right. And because of my anxiety speaking in front of people, I always mm -hmm. chose to, to go last. And so when we had to write our names up on the board, my name was the very last, <laughs> which is probably the worst thing to do because while you're watching everybody talk and give their presentation, right. your anxiety, my anxiety is slowly growing. And so by the time I get to the front of the classroom and have you know 20 pairs of eyes staring at me, mm -hmm. I and my my response to being nervous is perspiration. <laughs> sure. And, and I normal. always say that after each of the four talks, mm -hmm. 
I would look like as if I had jumped into a pool with my clothes on. And even my tie was wet. Wow. So that's my story of my first public speaking experience was in college. Mm -hmm. But Laura, do it scared, but there's got to be a better way. What's right. It, it's, you know, we make these broad statements, do it scared. And we make these statements as coaches because we want those ideas to stick in your mind, mm -hmm. right? But we're not saying that we're not going to create that bridge between your anxiety and doing it scared, right? That's the thing to remember. So first of all, I want to say that it's commendable. That's a great story. And I have tremendous empathy for you because it's very much the same. I mean, my parents were divorced also, and there was a certain amount of dysfunction. Yes, for sure. And uh, interestingly, I was also raised um, for the first five years of my life on a pretty much full-time basis with, by deaf grandparents so there wasn't a lot of uh verbal communication going on so that was interesting when you couldn't really speak with anybody verbally at least so 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 the, the background story i have a lot of empathy for and uh it's made you the great guy and the great person and the great coach that you are today so i don't know yeah, about that but i appreciate all that. that i appreciate no, all that great. empathy but what no, are some strategies um yes. be behind the scenes you mentioned there there's a there's a 4P, is it 4P, 4P strategy? Yes. Okay. Yes. You know, I always tease you as annoying former English majors. We love our acronyms and our letters and abbreviations and whatever. So speaking of a bridge and building a bridge to the do it scared, I would suggest as your communication coach who specializes in speaking and presentation skill development in English, you've got to think about the four P's. What are they? Okay. The first P is your pace, pacing. You notice when I get nervous, I start to talk a little too quickly. All right. You have to be aware of your pacing. You have to take a deep breath and speak slowly and clearly, not so slowly that you're putting your audience to sleep, okay? but slowly enough so that if there is someone in the audience who speaks another language than you, who is grappling with some of the complex ideas that you're sharing, has a chance to digest that information. So a normal pacing would be, hello, my name is Laura. I'm so glad that you came here today. We will be dealing with XYZ subject. And then you take a breath. Okay. And then you continue. So, so you have to sort of learn to count to three in your head to kind of keep yourself uh, going at a nice, even pace. Then the second P would be pitch. I'm looking down at my notes again. Oh my gosh, Keith, sorry about that, but it helps me. So pitch, when I get nervous, first of all, I have this really high voice. I mean, I answer the phone and people say, is your mother home, you know, and I get really annoyed. <laughs> I say, excuse me, I am the mother. <laughs> so, but my voice is high as it is. I have to make a concerted effort to relax my vocal cords before I even begin speaking. It's a good idea to drink some water, have a cough drop, do something to keep your vocal cords moist and your throat wet so that you don't become nervous, clamp up, and all of a sudden you're speaking like this because you just want to get all the information out there and oh my gosh, I hope I'm making a good impression because we know the, about the internal dialogue that's going on in your head. So take a breath, take count to three in your head for pacing. And when you're getting ready to control your pitch, breathe, have some water on the side, pop in a cough drop just before you're about to, to present, get rid of it later and take your time. Um, and then finally, the other thing is, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty loquacious, right? I love talking. I've always loved talking, got in trouble for it as a kid, always had something to say. My mother said, your biggest problem is you always want to have the last word. And I'd say, what do you mean? <laughs> and she'd say exactly that. But when you are speaking, when you are engaging your audience, the key thing to remember is to have respect for pausing. For, for pausing? Pausing. To pausing. pause to pause. Okay. People people get quite nervous about taking a minute to be silent. 
but you really should relax in it. You know, you you, you make a statement. Um, you make a statement, let's make one, let's say, for example, we could say something to the effect of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion is is not is not about compliance, it's about civil rights, right? And then I wait. Let them take that in for a minute. Let your audience take that in for a minute. What is she saying? What does she mean? And then I could go on further and explain that further by providing examples and giving um, testimony or um, further examples of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, three. Those, you got one more. One more. I got to get through this. Pace, pitch, projection. projection. Oh well, you're an, yes, you're an educator, so you appreciate this, of course. There's a thing called the teacher's voice, right? The teacher's voice. What is that? Projection. Anyone who has been an educator or even who has been involved in the theater knows that projection means I am able to project my voice to the people in the back of the room. Now, how do you do that? Do you do that by yelling, hi, hi, I'm Laura? No, you don't do that. <laughs> okay? No, you don't do that? That's, no. Oh. No. Projection is you have volume, but you're not screaming. You're saying, for example, hello, my name is, and we're here to talk about, and you're throwing your voice out there but you're not screaming, you're not changing your tone, you're not changing your pitch, and you're certainly not changing your pacing as well. Hmm. You are speaking with authority and you are speaking at a level where people can hear you and appreciate what you, what you have to say. In other words, I could get on the stage and I could say, Hello, everybody. My name is Laura Van LaRusso, and I'm here to talk to you about how you can improve your presentation skills. And the people in the back of the room would say, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> right? Or we talk about the challenges of technology. We both live in fear <laughs> of What's something. Yeah, yeah. Something crashing or so. Oh, we hope not. Don't even say it. I don't even put it out there. And so maybe the microphone doesn't work, right? Like you, you're thinking to yourself, I don't have to worry about projecting my voice because I have a microphone. But what if the microphone doesn't work? What if something goes wrong with your technology? Hmm. You have to learn to stand and you're speaking at a louder volume, but you're not screaming. You're speaking in a way that you're throwing your voice to the back of the room so that the people in the cheap seats, if you will, the people in the way back can still hear you. So those are my, that's my P's exclamation, uh, explanation, sorry, exclamation too. <laughs> I, I think that, I think that's perfect. And so it does give me something very much to think about because more and more outside of the podcast arena, I do find myself in speaking engagements. And, I, and my problem is, and so outside of the fact that I've overcome the fear factor associate it with the very first time only because once I had done that and so the second part of my story was mm -hmm. there was something about the experience even though my first time was pure perspiration <laughs> and literally right. but there was something inside of me that said this was something I wanted to do more of and mm -hmm. I can't really explain it, except that it was it, it was not just a thought. It was like an emotional, and I, I'm not big on spirit, but maybe a spiritual experience that I wanted to do more of it. And so once I did graduate from college, that was my only speaking class. I never took another one. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even go into theater. Um, to <laughs> I didn't even go into, you know, to practice, although the speaking instructor was the director of the theater um, Excellent. Uh -huh. at, at the college. Um, but once I got my first job as a social worker, I actually started to, you know, when everybody, when, when they asked for, Hey, would you go to the school and talk about, you know, mental health issues related right. to kids and whatnot, or things like that, I would be the one to volunteer 
because basically everybody else uh, in my department was afraid, you know, to do mm -hmm. those kind of things or, you know, thought that that wasn't their thing. But I tend to think it was more on the, I don't, I'm, fr I'm afraid. So I actually intentionally volunteered myself until the, I got an opportunity to mm -hmm. teach at a community college, which actually put me front and center. And so that's kind of where I started, you know, that progression of, of practice and that progression of building confidence and the progression of building uh, aptitude through in speaking. Now, I don't think I'm ever, and, but I, I said all that to say I've come a long way, but yes. I do have an issue with, I'm an asthmatic by nature. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to really have to practice what the four P's that you just said, mm -hmm. especially I think pacing, because I will lose breath if I talk too much. And I know that even as a podcast host and mm -hmm. co-host with you, that if I keep on trying to push words out of my mouth, I can't breathe. <laughs> and so I literally have to right. watch, you know, how fast and how much I talk in order to keep the pace just right and the conversation flowing as it should be. Mm -hmm. And you do an excellent job. I, um, we all have our strengths and we all have our journeys. And I appreciate your journey. You actually went from your personal, uh, going from doing it scared, the personal experience of the emotion mm -hmm. to developing professionally over time. And, uh, and in terms of the pacing, that maybe that is your struggle. My struggle is pitch, because as I get nervous, my voice just gets higher and higher. And then that's not, it's not helpful, especially, uh, I, I don't know, maybe some people would think it's sexist. I don't mean it to be sexist, but I think women uh, have to be very careful about, you know, when we command the stage, we have to make sure that we're showing our authority especially i i don't i think everybody has to work hard but that women have to work particularly hard to make sure that um that they are respected and that they're communicating their expertise with authority and that involves pitch as well as pacing well so. laura i do appreciate this conversation as we have every tuesday so thank you so much you're so for welcome those and for those who are watching or listening, we thank you for joining us. This has been another edition of Coach to Coach with Laura Van LaRusso and Dr. Wonderful Keith. Wonderful as always. <laughs> Wonderful as always, Dr. Keith. And Dr. Keith Finale. And we'll see you next time. Take care.